Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Georgi Chakarov and together we look at how to create data sets in DHIS2. Okay, I'm back here with Georgi. Hey Georgi. Hey Nick. Hey. And uh, we're going to go through the creating data sets assignment, yeah? Yep. Cool. So let's just scroll down through these instructions to just get a double check on what we have to do. So we have to go to the dataset app uh, and we're going to create a new one and just look at that using some of the data elements we've already created. And at the very yes. end, we'll talk about how that uh, needs to be. I think if you go right on the way down, uh, it shows that we need to connect it to a user role, which is important. Otherwise, we won't be able to see the data set. So we'll make sure we look at that at the end. Uh, cool, so let's just pop over to DHIS2 and see what we're at. So we're in the data set app here. And uh, yeah, if you click on that data set right there, and we will just add new to look at what that screen looks like. We have the name, the short name, uh, code is, we talk about codes a, a little bit more in the org unit config sheet um, video. Sarah talks about what codes mean. So it's a, if you wanna look into that. Um, description, uh, Georgie, do you want to talk more about some of these uh, options further down? Like expiry days and any of these things that you find important? Um, yes, actually. Uh, so let's, let me just quickly browse through these and see which ones should we speak about. So, of course, the stars, those are mandatory. So when you select one of these options, it actually gives you the time period of your data set. So if you'd like to enter data daily, weekly, or monthly, you just select one of these options. Mm -hmm. Now, if you just go up to expiry days, um, this is actually gives you uh, the time or the days after, um, after which the data set or the data entry form will not be available for, um, for data entry. Mm. Actually, yes. So um, let me see. This should be related to a reporting period. Exactly. So if you if you select, let's say, monthly, and then you know that your month is ending on the 31st of January, let's say, if you say five days here, this means that on the 5th of February, then your data entry form will be locked and you will be unable to um, enter information. Okay, interesting. Okay, yes, and... The combination of categories, that's where we, we've talked about categories before, and this is where we get to choose them for our data set, yeah? Yes. Drop down. Yes. So default uh, is just uh, not, no disaggregation, really. But uh, when you can, you can choose any that you have already created. Yeah. Um, and the, the rest of them, I, I think is um, pretty straightforward, but... Uh, let me just quickly mention this one, uh, complete notification recipient. So when you come actually enter data into your data set and then you uh, acknowledge it as a complete data set, mm -hmm. then it will send a notification to whomever is concerned. So it could be your manager, it could be um, you know, your funder, it could be one of your colleagues. So this is one uh, interesting and, and mm -hmm. handy function. And the list we're looking sets. at are, are user groups. So yes. those are created user groups and that's how you would adjust that list. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and then all data elements, uh, all fields required, yes or no. Um, complete only validation passes. This is pretty basic stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Skip offline, element decoration. Um, render sections as tabs. So sections are data elements that have different disaggregations, right? So uh, mm -hmm. if, if one disaggregation is male, female, and another is um, young, old, then those will be two different sections and they can either be one on top of the, of the other or they can be as tabs so they're almost like different pages in a folder and that's how that would work so that's really good when you have a lot of sections in a, in a form or it's it's too long Sec tabs can be a really good way uh, to organize that yes makes it a little bit more neat and uh, not so busy mm -hmm. on the screen yeah so let's go down and see how we actually select these data elements so we have the available data elements, and we just double click or, or select and press the arrow to pop them into our 
data set and that is as easy as it gets i think <laughs> <laughs> they just have to be created and then you just pop them right in so this is this is really nice yeah. And then indicators you can put in, is that to be able to see a ro something, the number that already exists? Is that the idea there, Georgie? Because um, I know that we don't have experience, I haven't had experience personally putting indicators into data sets myself. So I don't know if you have, or if that's something that's kind of, you know, read, read up further somewhere else. <laughs> we don't cover it. No, I actually uh, haven't. Um, but as we know that indicators are actually uh, built from data elements, mm -hmm. right? Um, I suppose that if you have two data elements on a data set and then you fill, fill in the data for, for those two data elements and they compile one indicator, then you should be able to see the, uh, the result or the, the value of the indicator immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I'd just like to go back up before we move on to the user roles, because the the the, um, the drop down for section or category combinations, uh, <laughs> yeah. So we talked about category combinations as disaggregate, but I believe um, there's also the um, attribute categories, yes. and the attribute. This is what we're talking about here, actually, on the data set is um, an attribute category is a way that you can enter the same data entry form for different um, for different groupings almost. So uh, one example is we had a client who wants to have the same data entry form in the same org unit, the same region, uh, but being entered by different, uh, what would they be called, different funders or different uh, programs, different um, facilities. Yeah. And they want to be able to disaggregate that so that they can see, uh, you know, four different uh, organizations have entered the same data form in the same area at the same time but they need to be able to disaggregate by those different organizations and if you then yeah. that's that's an example of a attribute category which is what you would be choosing here and you create it in the exact same way as you create the other categories it's just uh, you change it to be instead of disaggregate it's called um, attribute that's a little mm -hmm. off the beaten path but i just wanted to kind of mention that here yeah, that is quite important. So if you actually have uh, one data data set, but you have, let's say, two people or two organizations that collect data for that data set. So instead of um, creating those two organizations as your org unit structure, you can actually create them as attribute categories. So uh, you can differentiate to the same data set, but the data will differ uh, depending on who collected it. So it's a one way of disaggregating your data set. Yeah, you could also do something like, uh, and this just came to me, but you know, who entered, who who took a poll in the morning and who took a poll in the evening, uh, and so it's the same questions, but it's morning and evening, and so you could see we have different responses depending on when we ask in the morning and when we ask in the evening, for example. Um, but that's kind of uh, on its on its own thing. So let's let's get back to uh, the actual assignment and go to yeah the users <laughs> here because once we've created a uh, data set which we've just shown, you would have clicked save. Then you actually have to go into a yeah at the very mm. bottom there. Uh, you just click save. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, we don't have a name, so we well, we're not going to save this one because yeah, okay. Um, it, it's up to it's up to you listening or watching to, to create your own. Um, but what you do is once you have that, you need to be able to enter data for it. That's the whole point. So uh, you have to go to a use the user um, app and go into user roles, which we are here now. Uh, and then you have to click on one of these user roles that that you're going to be using, whether it's all of them or whether it's one specific one. So we'll use data entry as an example just to show what it looks like. So you left click, yeah, click edit. And then you'll see an option of data sets. And those are the data sets there at the top uh, that you have that this user role has access to. So actually, if you just left, like double click on that monthly school visit, because that's one that we actually want this user to have anyways, um, that's an, it's the same selection process. And then when you click save, then this user will, uh, this user role will have access to that data set and whoever, uh, whichever user has that user role, therefore is able to access that data set. Is that, uh, is that, do you think that's good enough, Georgie? Yeah, I think that was perfect. I just wanted to add that uh, by assigning uh, data sets to different users, you actually control the access uh, mm -hmm. of users to different data sets. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, 
you know, system um, um, risk management, so to speak. Yeah, so and we'll talk any... about that more in the user roles video yes. for sure. Yes. Cool. Okay, so um, I think that's good for now. We don't want to waste your people's time. So <laughs> thanks so much, Georgie, for walking us through with uh, joining me on this walkthrough. And uh, I think Thank that's you, it Nick. for now. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical 